Hi, good week to all. I'm back for my week long off break. So welcome to this week's latest edition of the weekly technical outlook on the major four indices that I cover on a regular basis at the start of every Monday. So uh, this will be for the week of 2nd of August to 6th of August. So uh, let's take a look on the disclaimer slides first. All right. Okay, so let's take a look at the raw momentum analysis of the weekly performance across the globe. That means we're talking about from US to Asia, the major Asia stock indices, as well as in Europe, which is the German DAX. So we could see last week's performance is kind of a, a bit of a muted performance uh, across the board on the US major stock indices, the S&P 500. Uh, down by negative 0.4%, the Nasdaq down by 1%, the Dow Jones now very similar, down by 0.4%, and the one showing a bit of up performance, or I would say up performance slightly, is the Vassal 2000, the small cap at 0.7%. So what we could see is a bit of profit taking versus its prior four-week performance, and also uh, versus its uh, prior four-week average, with the exception of the Russell 2000. So if you look at the Russell 2000, uh, it's kind of a uh, been positive in the last two the two prior weeks, uh, or last week and as well as the previous week. But however, its prior four week average is still negative 0.72, and overall for the month of July, it actually is the worst performer in terms of the monthly performance. All right. So if you look back in the month of July over here, is that the strong up performer is came within our uh, this uh, Q3 uh, team play where we are just expecting this up performance of high quality technology stocks over cyclicals. So that's actually explain everything is unfolding as expected uh, where NASDAQ 100 is actually up performing for the whole month of July. If you take everything about two, four weeks as a whole, they actually did strong up performer 2.78 uh, versus the S&P 2.28% and definitely the Dow Jones Industrial Average which is heavily weighted towards the cyclical stocks uh, at or almost doubled uh, because it's actually only show 1.25% monthly performance in July. So uh, I would say that yes, last week performance is kind of a uh, lackluster, but later I'll share with you all the individual uh, technical elements of the Nasdaq 100, S&P 500. We will have a better clear picture that uh, the trend is still intact. All right, there's still no signs of exhaustion. Initially, I thought that we may start to see a risk of a final push up but however, this piece of a final push-up seems to be negated if I take a look at the bigger picture, the intermarket picture as a whole. So I'll talk more about that later. So I want to highlight that last week, we see a kind of a bloodbath on the China stock market uh, triggered by this uh, China big tech stocks. So uh, China big tech actually, what, what it happens is that uh, to, 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 to have a quick story is uh, two weeks ago on Friday, the Chinese regulators now targeted online Chinese education firm that are listed in US. All right, on the called US ADR, they actually claim that uh, this particular firm should be made public rather than profit oriented, okay, due to the uh, social the social norm. Uh, so right now we start to see uh, this regulatory clampdown on China big tech stock or technology stocks that are primary e-commerce related, e-commerce platform, big data platform, not so much on the chips, the semiconductor chip that is considered as uh, one of the sectors that the Chinese uh, regulator wants to drive going forward. But right now, they seem to be targeting those uh, Chinese technology stock or big tech stocks that are related to e-commerce platform, that are related to uh, big data, that are so now related to uh, online tutoring. Because all this seems to be driving uh, a wedge uh, where the, 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 the social economic tension between the very rich, the middle class, and the very poor starts to get divided. And it seems to be the regulator is blaming on this firm who are getting very strong in terms of that industry and is causing this kind of social uh, disruption. Okay, so that's driving this, 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 uh, this, this situation over here in this ongoing regulatory clampdown in China towards the China big tech firms. But later I'll share with you on the Hansing Index. In fact, we come close to a very key support level last week. All right. So last week, we start to see a very drastic sell down on this uh, China-related stock market triggered 
created by this uh, or triggered by an indirect negative feedback loop on China big tech stock that's spreading over to the rest of the market uh, as a whole. So that's why we see the Hansen index down by 5%. Hansen tech, which is comprises of all big tech stocks, excluding all the banks whatsoever, negative 6.7%. All right, then don't, don't forget Hansen index, right? The biggest weightage is Tencent which is considered as the major general of the China big tech stocks. All right, so later I share with you on the Hansen Index. Uh, why is it interesting? Because it actually managed to have a weekly close above our long-term pivotal support that we highlighted at the start of Q3. Okay, so these are the big levels to watch uh, for three to six months time frame, right? To actually validate, to say that, hey, whether Hansen is still bullish or bearish. So fortunately, last week, price action still did not actually trigger a major downtrend yet on Hansen Index, despite the uh, the, the very drastic sell-off. Later, I'll explain to you all why on the technical chart of Hansen. So uh, if you look at the money performance, yeah, they're the weakest overall, uh, negative 10%, then the worst will be the Hansen Tech Index, okay? That comprises all the China big tech stock at negative 16%. So uh, pretty much boring for the Nikkei 225, still kind of a uh, lackluster movement sideway, uh, close to negative 1% for last week. Uh, you look at for the whole month of July, it's negative 5%. All right, then for the German DAX as well, negative 0.8%. For the whole month, almost unchanged. All right, so we start to see a big sideway movement uh, on the German DAX index. They're still consolidating the sideway trend. Okay, now, uh, very quickly, let's take a look at the sector's performance first, the US S&P sector's performance. So uh, last week, for the week of 26th of July to 30th of July, uh, we start to see a bit of uh, fight back by the cyclical stocks. Uh, materials uh, up 2.8%, energy up around 1.6% for last week, then financial 0.71%, that's our performer. But if we look into, uh, then definitely the one that is underperforming will be the technology stocks. Okay, due to, uh, towards the end of the week, there was actually a sell-off uh, in big caps, uh, higher, big weighted, big weightage uh, technology stock like Apple, and Microsoft. Okay, these are actually highlighted in my Twitter, uh, my Twitter my Twitter tweet this morning. So for those who want to have a daily kind of commentary every morning, follow me on Twitter. I start tweeting every morning in Singapore by 8:30 a.m. to give a guys you all a quick recap what's happening in the US market. So you can find all information over there. All right. So I want to touch more on the technical analysis now instead rather than commentary. Okay, sectors performance one month. Uh the one that is outperforming will be a bit of defensive healthcare, plus 4.7%. Then you have technology, not too bad as well, 3.82%. Then followed by uh, utilities, which is also a defensive, 4.21%. And REITs uh, also considered as a defensive uh, due to its uh, nature of a kind of, you know, REITs, right? REITs is a kind of a uh, regular kind of fixed, fixed income dividend payout. Okay, why is it performing well? Because of the yield curve, the US 10 year treasury yield. Is actually coming down, all right. So that's why, uh, for those, uh, is those uh, stocks, uh, utilities and uh, real estate that give you a fixed kind of a dividend payout will tend to actually perform better in a, an environment where potentially interest rate or I would say that a, uh using the U.S. ten-year Treasury as a proxy starts to be on the downside, all right. So then, uh, definitely the, the one that is up underperforming will be your energy and financials, which is your slightly close uh, underperforming team play for Q3 uh, that is still unfolding at this moment in time. So financials negative 0.61%, energy is negative 8.4%. All right. So now very quickly, a bit of market breath. So uh, for the market breath is something like how many stocks are actually taking part or making new highs? Uh, versus the big component stock. So I look at S&P 500 as a whole. So this is this one market breath to see whether is it considered by only a few stocks that are actually driving the market, which we don't want. Huh? Uh, if there's a, only a few stocks that's driving the market, uh, that means there's a risk that the market may start to do a pullback uh, and depending on what kind of uh, a breath you're looking at. Because this breath I'm looking at is more from a short to medium term perspective. That means like a multi-week perspective. is stocks that are making 20-day highs minus stock making 20-day lows. Okay, so it's about a month. Uh, stocks making one month high versus stocks making one month low. So definitely, we're talking about a healthy market where S&P were to maintain its medium-term uptrend. We're talking about multi-week uptrend. We should start to see more stock making 
20 day high versus more stock making 20 day low. So what we could see over here is that since the low over here previously, somewhere around uh, mid of July, very deep down, and now it started to recover slightly. All right, so uh, it still didn't surpass uh, last week high. So it's kind of pretty neutral kind of a uh, market breath movement in this particular uh, breath indicator. But what's interesting over here is the Nasdaq 100, the one that is uh, driven by the uh, technology stock. So even though last week, right, Nasdaq 100 uh, underperformed due to actually caused by uh, big tech stocks that is actually underperforming towards on Friday and Thursday, especially on Amazon. Okay, Amazon flow fall close to 9% last, uh, last week. Uh. Uh, weekly close okay due to its negative uh guidance but what's interesting over here is that the breath you look at the breath uh, rather than single stocks uh, inside the nasdaq 100 there are actually more stocks making new 20-day high improving higher higher low versus more stocks making 20-day low so this is actually a good sign of market breath for the nasdaq 100 for for it to able to say that hey there are more stocks right now that are doing 20-day high versus 20-day low that means more stocks are actually inching higher rather than lower. So as a whole, the market uh, uptrend, I would say that the middle uptrend for Nasdaq 100 seems to be pretty healthy at this juncture. All right. So now uh, let's very quickly over here is that take a look at the key economic data releases. I'll flash it for a while. So what I want to highlight for you, uh, interestingly, is we have a couple of central bank meeting this week. Uh, firstly, uh, will be RBA, the Australia Central Bank on Tuesday, which is tomorrow, 12.30 p.m. This is Singapore time. It's all in Singapore time, 12.30 p.m. Then after that, you followed by Bank of England for uh, monetary policy decision as well, 7 p.m. on Thursday. And to sum it up, will be non-farm payroll. This is the U.S. employment data for the month of July, 8.30 p.m. on Friday. All right. Then what's next will be your earnings season. Okay, so earnings season definitely is still hot uh, in terms of U.S. and now start to actually uh, flow down to China big tech stock as well as the Singapore market. So the highlight is that uh, first to kick off will be Alibaba. So everybody will be pretty much concerned about Alibaba to see whether the last few months of regularly, regulatory clam down, down by the Chinese authority does it impact the uh, um, bottom line. But what's interesting over here is that technically it seems to be very positive. So take a look at my Twitter uh, account where I actually highlighted Alibaba will be my chart of the week. Chart of the week, uh, that means uh, because I start to see very interesting uh, technical element that is appearing on Alibaba. All right, so Alibaba, uh, all these timing are based on US, the US ADR. So it's definitely US uh, Tuesday before the US market open. All right, which is tomorrow. Then after uh, closer to home Singapore, we have the, the big three, the the, the three local banks. Uh, OCBC will be the first one to kickstart on Wednesday before the Singapore stock market open. Q2 earnings there followed by uh, UOB on Wednesday as well uh, before the market open. And lastly, followed by DBS on Thursday before the market open. Then uh, definitely uh, we've got to take a look at uh, TA, uh, those who are interested in the uh, Moderna. Moderna recently uh, is related to C uh, they are actually the, the what you call the few uh, key uh, COVID-19, uh, major COVID-19 vaccine maker. Uh, so, so it's definitely pretty much interesting for those who actually track Moderna stocks. Then this one is on the highlight is uh, Tao, uh, TAL Education. So this is actually one of the major Chinese online education stock that is listed in US, the US ADR that got hit okay, very badly uh, last week. All right, so pretty interesting to see. How does it uh, react after the earnings release? Okay, so now uh, with that in mind, okay, let's now quickly go to the technical chart of the respective uh, major stock indices that I want to share with you. All, all right, so let us switch back to the CMC Next Gen platform. All right, so let's start with the S&P 500 first, the US market first. So very quickly, right, before we talk about US market, right, uh, as those who actually uh, followed me Frequently, I'll tend to look at other intermarket or, or proxy or some risk on or risk off proxy to have a gauge on the situation on the global stock indices. So one thing that I like to look at will be the semiconductor index. So uh, I'll use US as a benchmark because of the, the kind of influence of this uh, Philadelphia P PHLX semiconductor ETF. It consists of all the major uh, semiconductor stocks in terms of revenue and in terms of significant they play in the overall semiconductor industry. So this is definitely a good benchmark to actually take a look at the momentum that is actually taking shape in the semiconductor global semiconductor industry 
in the global perspective. All right. So uh, so everything right now over here is that I want to talk about momentum. I don't talk about fundamental over here because fundamental, there's a lot of arguments saying, well, yeah, just only supply chain issue. No. But what I'm concerned over here is that because we are looking from a very short-term perspective of the market, the trend, we're talking about multi-week trend. So as a trader, definitely, my factor will definitely be, be more concerned in the momentum, whether it's picking up or not. Okay, so momentum factors will definitely have a higher significant uh, contribution in my analysis from a trading perspective. So what we could highlight over here is that uh, in a couple of weeks ago, I did highlight that, hey, this particular stock is or this particular ETF, semiconductor ETF, is actually consolidating inside a range since April. So we're talking about May, June, July, uh, close to about three months of range or six or four months of range. So it's pretty nice range over here. So uh, has been holding on above the 50-day moving average since the test of it on 19th of July. And right now, last Friday, it made an all-time high. Okay, and close above the previous high over here uh, on 5th of April, okay, which is 449. Okay, so what we could see over here is that uh, we could be actually due for a potential bullish breakout because uh, still recall that uh, we have a target or resistance at 458. So after this level breaks, and uh, it doesn't seem to any, show any signs of exhaustion in terms of the pattern. Higher high, higher low. And those who know a bit of chart pattern, this is similar like a cup and handle formation. Okay, a very nice rounding higher low as seen from here. Momentum pretty strong, holding above the support level, cross point support level at the 43 and 37% level mark showing higher higher low as well. So what we could see is that upside momentum is still pretty much healthy from a medium term perspective, where as long as 423.60 holds for this week, uh, I do expect that this trend to continue, means higher high, to actually see a further potential push up towards the next resistance at 495. So if this scenario starts to play out, and if you look at the current positive technical configuration of the semiconductor stock, it's very hard for us to actually start to say, hey, we may start to see a bit of residual push up on the S and P five hundred or the Nasdaq hundred, which I talked about two weeks ago before my leave. There's a risk there. There's a there's a risk factor there. But this particular risk factor has more or less negated initially from about let's say fifty percent. It now dropped to about only twenty percent. Okay, due to the very strong technical co configuration that I see in the semiconductor stock and also on the index itself. Okay, now I will share with you on the S and P and Nasdaq hundred. Okay, now let's go down to the Nasdaq S and P five hundred. So let's look at the daily chart first. So daily chart, right? Still, record, I have a risk level at four four five fifty. That if you look at the current situation here, right, there's no signs of exhaustion. In fact, it's just a sideways formation since hitting the all time high on twenty six of July, which is at four four two four, and it start to congest. Okay, then those who knows a bit of chart pattern, this is what I call a bullish pendant or a very bullish minus symmetrical triangle configuration. Technical uh, indicator match uh, momentum daily RSI is so inching upwards. Okay, so there is actually no signs of exhaustion and it still has room to move up before going up towards hitting the extreme oversold level relatively that is in place uh, since 23rd of December last year, which is now at 77, 77%. And also uh, the 50 day moving average that is matched to help on uh, the previous dip on 19th of July, tested on 18th of June. Uh, 30 of May is now acting as a support at 4290. All right, so what I could do over here is it's coming very close to our, our so called uh, target of resistance that we predefined two weeks ago at 4450 slash 4460. But there's still no signs of exhaustion, which means, i.e., there's a relatively higher chance right now that 445, 4450, pardon me, 4460 is likely potentially to break up. Okay, so with that in mind, right, I will actually maintain that bullish bias by tightening up the key minimum term pivotal support to 4290. So what's 4290 is the 50 day moving average. And right now also the ascending channel of this minor ascending channel that is in place or medium term ascending channel that is in place since 5th of March 2021 low. All right. And you look at the 4 hour RSI also inching upwards from the 50% level. It came to us that momentum is still strong. Okay, so uh, I'm actually looking forward to a potential further up move. If 4290 holds, that means there's no daily close below 4290, we should start to see a further potential impulsive leg of up move uh, to actually uh, break past uh, 4450 slash 60 towards the next resistance at 4540 next. All right, on the NASDAQ, okay, pardon me, on the S&P 500. Okay, now, then what's cooking on for the NASDAQ 100? Okay, so for the NASDAQ 100, let's quickly take a look at the daily chart. So on the daily chart over here, I could see that still recall that uh, 
40-40, former major upside trigger. So once this level goes, we expect a very strong, substantial, uh, uh, impulsive uplift that could last three to six months, which is actually taking shape right now. Okay. So uh, what we could see now over here is that uh, very nice higher high, higher low. Uh, no signs of exhaustion as well. Very similar bullish pendant formation that's being formed on the uh, NASDAQ 100. So we do have a risk level initially at uh, 15,130 slash uh, 300, where two weeks ago, I have a kind of risk uh, about close to about 50% saying that we may see a residual push up, then thereafter we may start to have a multi-week kind of decline, okay? Corrective decline. But from what I see over here is that uh, this probability of multi-week decline Seems to be very seems to be lower right now in terms of probability. Probably from fifty percent, fifty percent, it dropped to twenty percent, uh, as added by this ongoing bullish uh, configuration in terms of price action that's being seen on the Nasdaq hundred, as well as the momentum still remain relatively healthy on the RSI uh, indicator, the daily RSI indicator showing higher high higher low, higher low right above the fifty percent uh, corresponding support level, and it has not reached the extreme overbought level yet at. 80%. Okay, so this extreme overbought level is in place since 24th of December 2019 low. Pretty much similar to the extreme overbought level that was seen on the S&P 500. So the 50-day moving average now is at 14,500, all right, which is close to the swing lows of 19th of July and yeah, 19th of July. Okay, 19th of July uh, swing low, which is now at 14,500. So with that, right, if I were to look at the Nasdaq 100, uh, previous week before I leave, right, I have this uh, key minimum pivotal support at 14,480, 14,500. So what we could see now is that I will actually tighten the key medium-term pivotal support because it has really uh, inched up much higher. And uh, also why I do I want to tighten is because short-term momentum has started to turn positive. If you look at the today's, uh, this uh, bullish breakout from this uh, minor descending resistance that kept previous, previous uh, kept this uh, resistance level, that means it's similar to the resistance level that was seen on the price action. So what it means uh, over here is that if I were to draw the line in terms of price action, uh, let me change this color to gray, okay? So what it means over here, right? Uh, in parallel, the resistance on the RSI that is similar to the resistance on the price action has staged a pre-bullish pre-signal, indicating to us that there's a high probability that price action will start to break up as well because Relative strength index is always a second derivative of price action. It measures momentum. I think that's a second derivative of something, a price action, will always have a leading element. All right. So you want to find out more about how this kind of technical analysis indicator works. Okay, go on to our uh, uh, CMC uh, Singapore YouTube channel. Look out for trading like a pro series. I have a uh, 10 modules right, right now. It's 10 modules right there. Uh, conducted by me, I actually broadcast, uh, actually uh, created this 10 videos, 10 short videos. It's all about how to gel various technical analysis together to formulate a trading strategy. So I'll share, I'll actually touch on more about RSI, okay, from there, okay? So you can actually take a look at that those videos uh, in our CMC uh, Singapore uh, YouTube channel. So with that, right, with this pre-signal from this uh, short-term uh, for our RSI, so with that, I will actually be more comfortable to tighten up my key middle-term pivotal support to 14,760. So what's 14,760 is the former swing high area of 21st of July, now turns into a pullback support that managed to help uh, our last uh, week sell off, all right, and bounce from here. And also the lower boundary of this uh, kind of a um, short-term ascending channel that is in place since 13th of May, 21 low. So I'm still uh, looking for a further potential up move uh, as long as 14,760, there's no daily close below it. Uh, we should see a test towards 15,250 slash 300, a break above it to take sharp potentially higher towards the top of this ascending channel at 15,600 slash 15,660, which is so a confluence of a FIBO expansion level as well. All right. So uh, yeah, pretty much bullish. Configuration of bullish observations still being seen on the NASDAQ 100 as well as the S&P 500 for now. All right. So now let's take on Hong Kong or Hang Seng, which everybody is pretty much concerned that does it now start to see of a major downtrend? But the picture is, to me, technically it's no. It's, in fact, it's quite positive. Why? Because if you look at the sell-off so far that we see 
That means if you take a look at from the start of February uh, this year, that means after the lunar Chinese New Year break, all the way down to last week low at uh, 24,747, which is 20 percent. That, that, that's called they, they call it a bear market. Uh. Yeah, technically it's a bear market, I know. But if you look at the bigger picture, because we cannot just look at numbers alone to say that, hey, right now there's a major bear market that's taking shape. But if you look at the bigger picture, there are a couple of positive things on the highlight. If you look at it towards the end of last week, it formed a long tail. That means there is actually some kind of bullish interest that start to take shape and push up the market on Friday. And where does it push up? It actually push up right at two major support levels. Firstly, is the lower boundary of this ascending channel support that, 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 that kick-started right after the March low. Which, what happened in March 2020 low? That was actually the current major bull market kick-started globally. In general, we're talking about in general. We don't talk about others, uh, emerging stock market. We're talking about those bigger markets perspective. From the S&P, from STI, you can look at it, uh, or from uh, the German DAX, and some of the European markets, the major stock, the major stock, the major global stock indices. So that actually kickstarted the ongoing current major uptrend. And another thing where it started is it start it actually stopped at this major long term, this long term circular descending trend line previously from Jan 2018 high, that was the autumn high, that kept previous push up and now turns into a pullback support. So there are actually bullish interest coming into the picture after last week's sell-off. So what it means that over here is that the market is being supported by someone. And this someone could be with deep pockets, potentially. They're able to reverse a bit of negative psychology. And don't forget, if we start to look at where does a market, uh, I would say where, before a significant up move starts, be it bullish or bearish, there must be also a kind of extreme movement in sentiment. So what we start to see last week, there was an extreme fear in the China big tech stock, which explained to us the Hong Kong 50 fell down because the biggest component stock inside was Tencent. And from there, it causes indiscriminate selling across the board, almost across the board. So there was a kind of extreme fear inside the China stock market, which led to this extreme fear of indiscriminate selling in the Hong Kong stock market as well, in general. So what we start to see over here is that a potential kind of selling climax that may take shape inside the China big tech stock, which eventually start to see it happening at major support level. So this was the key support level that I predefined at the start of Q3. So those who actually, uh, 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 we call it a uh, uh, kind of listen to our Q3 global market outlook webinar that I kickstarted, that I actually shared with you all at the start of uh, July, before you know the Q3 started. 25676 was my predefined level. So I did mention that as long as we don't have any weekly close below 25760, potentially the major uptrend still continue. All right. So now from a risk, risk perspective, okay, uh, we're talking about uh, reward risk ratio perspective. Definitely it pays right now to turn, to, to maintain a bullish bias because it managed to help at the major long-term pivotal support. Correct. Log log logically, I couldn't turn bearish from there because as I have a longer term support level that is being defined on the weekly chart that take precedent on a shorter term level that has been taken out. Okay, so this is how I do a proper technical analysis. All right. Yes, everybody is pretty fearful. Yeah, short term level is being taken out, but now it's actually bouncing off from a long term support level that is defined from a higher time frame chart that take precedence over the level that is in the daily chart and the four hour chart. Okay, this is the message I want to share with you all. All right. So now let's quickly go down to the four hour chart. So what we could see over here, right, in this four hour chart, there's this uh, kind of a, I would say a bit of out layer that managed to actually went past down the lower boundary of this descending channel or descending range from 18th of February 2021 high and managed to reintegrate back into this channel. 
So what you could see, this is what I call an out layer, statistically an out layer, which represents extreme downside pressure. Okay, so I'll be using 25760 as the pivot support for this week, okay, to see at least a potential push, a first step of push up to test this immediate intermediate support or intermediate resistance, pardon me, at 27030. All right, 27030. A daily close above 27030 may take us up higher to the last, the next swing high area of 15th of July, which is at 28,160, which is so corresponding very closely to the lower boundary of this descending channel. All right, if we have a daily close below 25,760, 25, then we could see another kind of a, 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 a sell potential push down again to retest last week low at 24,750 level. Okay, so that's my strategy for this week on the Hong Kong 50 index. Now, very quickly, let's take a look now at Japan, Japan 225. All right, so go on to the next chart of Japan 225. So let me start off the Nikkei 225. Uh, let's take a look at the longer term chart first. All right, because Nikkei 225, we also start to see a lot of whipsaw movement uh, here and there. Okay, so before we go into the daily chart, let's take a look at what we have for Q3, the weekly chart. Uh, this is a weekly chart. The strategy you have for Q3 is as long as there's no weekly close below this 26,880, that's my long-term key, medium-term key pivotal support for to maintain that bullish bias in the Nikkei 225 from a three, three months perspective, is this support level must hold. That means there's no weekly close below it, which corresponds to the 50-week moving average uh, right now. So last week, it actually printed a low of 26,690 uh, and closed at 26,4960. Okay, last week, uh, 26,500, give or take. So what we could see over here is that uh, on the daily chart, right, I did mention this 27,500, uh, a bit of excess, 26,880, there's a long-term pivotal support. So it still managed to toggle at this level, uh, despite, you know, some push down at this 26,500, but didn't actually break below 26,880. And technically, uh, it's still below the 200-day moving average, okay, ever since the break of it on... 16th of July, okay, two weeks ago. But momentum start to turn a bit positive. If you start to see why we why we by positive there, we start to see lower low on the price index. Okay, lower low on the price index, but daily RSI start to shape higher low on the oversold region, close to the oversold of the oversold region. It means that this push down in relationship with downside momentum has started to ease as indicated by the bullish divergence on the daily RSI. So we start to see now a bit of a mixed picture. Price still below the 200-day moving average, but leading properties or leading technical properties as indicated by the momentum indicator, the daily RSI, has started to shape positive configuration by this bullish divergence, indicating to us that the reason two weeks of downside momentum has started to ease down and right at the support level over here. Okay, the support level that we define. So what we could see over here is that if we could go to the four hour time frame, right, it's still inside this expanding wedge configuration since 16th of Feb 2021 high. Okay, it's still trading inside this range. Uh. So to me, right, what I could do over here is that I will use 26,880, which is my long term pivotal support. And last week's swing high at 28,250 as my neutrality range. So I expect to see a bit of big sideway movement within this range. Unless it has a kind of a um, four hour close above 28,250, then we could see a push up towards 28,860 in the first step. All right. So, uh, yeah, then if we start to see a weekly close, because this is a 26,880, it's a long term pivotal support. That means we need to have a weekly close below it to actually validate a further down move towards the lower boundary of this uh, expanding wish support at 25,900 level. Okay, so uh, having a neutrality stance uh, for the Nikkei 225 due to mixed elements for this week between 28,250 and 26,880. Okay, so now uh, going on to the German 30 index, okay, or the DAX. Okay, so we look at the DAX over here is that uh, pretty sideways uh, since 14th of June, which is the all-time high region. So close to about, I would say, give or take around four to six weeks of sideways movement already, still consolidating in the sideways range. 
but one thing positive is the RSI still managed to hold above the key, the corresponding key support level at the 42% mark. And also price action managed to help above the lower boundary of these major ascending channels. Support that is in place in 19 March 2020 low. All right. So uh, and it started to do a bit of, because it's still sideways, so it's kind of a whipsaw around the 50-day moving average. Okay, so uh, previously we have a, a support level at this 15,200 level. Uh, it's a kind of excess support where price action tests and start to bounce. So uh, this support level still holds, okay? So it still holds from a, from a uh, multi perspective. So I do not want to change so much because it's in a kind of a sideways range uh, right now for the past four to six weeks. So I'm still maintaining this sideway kind of, this, this kind of uh, pivotal support level, 15,200. So what's this level right now is also the lower boundary of this uh, short term selling channel that's in place since 1st February 2021 low. Okay, so definitely you got to have a uh, have a, a breakout, a daily close above 15,810. Okay, that is keeping uh, price action from moving higher since 14th of June 2021 high. So that's, that's an all time high level at 15,810. So uh, if you don't have a clear breakout above 15,810, it means be in this kind of sideways configuration again uh, for another week, uh, holding above the 15,200 support. So using 15,200 as a key medium-term pivotal support for this week, uh, still maintaining that bullish bias, definitely it will be uh, much more reinforced if we start to see a, a daily close above 15,810. 15, then thereafter, it could take us much higher to actually uh, test the next resistance zone at 16,070 200 in the first step. Okay, of this ongoing uh, medium term uptrend that is still intact. Okay, we in a, a major uptrend uh, phase uh, sequence that is in place since uh, March 2020 low last year. All right, so uh, with that, uh, thank you for your time uh, for listening to me. So in a nutshell, we're still maintaining that bullish bias on the major stock indices that I shared with you early on and keep a close lookout on the Hong Kong 50 index, which I feel that we may start to see a bit of extreme fear in the market, especially towards China big tech stock, where we may start to kickstart, uh, I would say potentially the start of a new major kind of a uh, bullish uptrend for this uh, Hong Kong 50 index or the China big tech stock. So, but definitely we will not start to see a very strong V-shaped recovery. It's, it's, it's more of a kind of a, uh, a rounded kind of a uh, rounded shape or rectangular shape given uh, we still have a bit of regulatory overhang in the market. All right, so with that, have a great trading week ahead and I see you all next in my next uh, video or webinar.